Hello, it's Gudget UK here again. Uh, might not have anybody here, let's have a wait and see if anyone joins. It's Friday night, so I'd imagine lots of people perhaps getting ready to go out on a Friday night and stuff. So the viewers might be super low tonight, I would expect. Oh, my back is absolutely killing me tonight. Oh, I don't want to do that. I was lucky I didn't break that. Just knock the keyboard over. Hi Neffers. Oh, I'm glad the YouTube reminder worked okay. Yeah, you'll have to suffer me <laughs> making moany noises. Oh yeah, hi Anthony. Yeah, I am wearing the RRG t-shirt here. And I also have an RRG mug, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a way of saying sorry for ignoring you yesterday. I just didn't see the messages. I couldn't see the wood for the trees kind of thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, fellow beard, beard owner. Hi, KOTM3. Uh, -O Hi, Christopher Magnum. And Anthony, obviously. So, hello to Nephus. Right, uh, okay, I'll switch the Archimedes on. Uh, yeah, I think I'll do that first. I was going to show you something on uh, regards to uh, Mega Drive, actually. Um, someone asked me a question today about trying to understand the fault uh, on the supply. Just bear with me a second. And I thought it might make an interesting discussion point and we can maybe do more things like that. I'm just, uh, you might wonder what I'm doing. I'm actually bending down <laughs> and connecting a, a 9 volt PP3 battery up to a SCAR cable. <laughs> and uh, in case you're wondering why, it will be covered in part 3 of the Archimedes uh, stuff. So uh, let's switch the Archimedes on. Hopefully we won't lose the stream. If at some point it goes off, just bear with me, I'll be back within a few minutes, so, you know, it'll have to reboot. I mean, we were lucky in that last stream, didn't need to do that. So, I'm hoping that the same is you know, true tonight. So, uh, let me just go back to the chat. Uh, okay, just catching up. Uh, hi, Lou Cooper. Hi there, I wish you the best, thank you. Ian Scott Johnson, yeah, thank you, Ian. Uh, uh, you were the other person that I forgot to give a shout out to. When he said hello in, I think it was the first, one of the first videos actually, um, I forgot to mention that Ian Scott, Johns uh, Scott Johnston has a great channel. Um, anything to do with electronics and repairs, you know, if you like things like Dave Jones, the EV blog, you should watch Ian's videos there. He creates some of his own uh, pieces of test equipment and stuff. Um, and at various points he does repairs to things as well. I think recently uh, there was a scope I think he was looking at. It had a power so it might have been a logic analyzer or something, I can't quite remember now. But nevertheless, it was very, very interesting to watch. Uh, Dave Curran, uh, again, I forgot to give Dave a shout out. Dave Curran has got a fantastic blog, you know, a technical blog, where he covers everything from repairs and upgrades and, you know, modifications. He creates his own upgrades and mods and things for various systems, things like the VIC-20. He was uh, the person that um, originally created the ultimate car for the VIC-20. So uh, yeah, lots of good stuff on Dave Curran's website. Um, I think I posted it in the C64 video, the link, but I'll post it again in this video as well. Uh, who else have we got here? ZX Renew, hi. Hi. Uh, trying to catch up, hang on. Yo Gadget, how's stuff today? Yeah, today's been uh, good. I'm, like everybody, I'm thinking, you know, hooray, it's weekend, thank goodness it's Friday kind of thing. Uh, made it through another week, but uh, I went to get my prescription after work and uh, you know, I mentioned the other day, I can't walk and stuff. It was absolute hell trying to get to the chemist. It, uh, it nearly killed me, and like now I'm really, really, really feeling it. So, yeah, apologise if you hear the odd uh, physical, you know, ooh, uh, sort of noise, you know, coming from my direction. Um, haven't used one of these since school. Um, yeah, I was unfortunate with this. Well, I say unfortunate, but the when I was at school, we had uh, the RM Nimbus. Um, around that time, I think we'd moved on from like the BBC and uh, what are those other ones called? The it was like a giant black uh, thing. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, my mind's gone. It wasn't a Nimbus, but anyway, we had those and uh, other schools in the area had the Archimedes. I think just coming in. And then as I got into the trade, we had contracts for all the local schools. Well, several of the local schools. And uh, a number of those schools used Archimedes, so that was my first proper exposure to the Archimedes. As uh, some of the uh, models came into, you know, for repair and service and stuff. Um, 
I'm going to try and avoid talking about certain aspects of the Archimedes. There's a reason for it. It's because I've been editing. Obviously, I've got you know footage for part three of the series, and I'm, if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up you know sort of covering the same ground twice. Or and I think some of the stuff I've captured in the video is perhaps better or more eloquently sort of put than I could perhaps uh, waffle through tonight. So uh, okay, let's just catch up with some of the messages. While we're doing that, let's just show you something. Let's go to the IDE disk here. We can have a look at that schematic for the Mega Drive that I just mentioned at the start. For anybody who missed that, um, I figured that when we do some of these videos where I've got something interesting technical to, that we can have a look at, it might be something simple, it might be something more complex, uh, where someone's asked me a question about something, we could perhaps have a look at it and one or two people might just be able to chip in, come up with their suggestions and maybe a few people might pick things up. And it might just be interesting just for the past a few minutes, I guess. Um, but while we do that, I'll just show you something else. There's a couple of uh, fantastic mod trackers uh, for the uh, Archimedes here. It's got um, an eight channel audio support. In fact, I think because of the way the sound is generated, you can actually get more than eight channels, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, but I've got a couple of really cool sound trackers here. If we go to that one, uh, Jeff Jones. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, good to see you here as well. Jeff Jones is a alias is super duper and he frequents uh, Ami Bay so if you're uh, aware of the TF you know terrible fire accelerators Jeff manufactures those and sends those out really fantastic sweet boards uh, and they're, they're very cheap as well you know you compare to something like one of the accelerators from individual computers where you might spend close to 200 pounds for something basic uh, you know you can get uh, one of those accelerates from him, yes, I have a word with Super Duper on uh, Ami Bay. So, all I was going to show you, we'll just get some music playing in the background just to show you uh, all so you can hear, let me think, which one to do. Let's, oh, yeah, I've done it, I've gone to there, yeah, I'm losing my mind again. Let's go into songs, can't talk and do things at the same time. Matrix, yeah, you might, if you're familiar with the PC demo scene, you might recognize this. We'll just wait for this to start, it takes us a few seconds to load in because obviously, well, it's 500 odd K. But you might recognize this music from the second reality demo for the PC. I might show that. I might even stick a clip of that in the uh, Archimedes part three video. Hopefully it's not too loud. Hopefully you can hear me over that. If it's too loud, in fact, I might just turn it down a little bit. Tell me if it's, uh, if it's too loud. Let's just reduce it a little bit. How's that? Can you hear me over the uh, sound there? Oh my goodness, someone's Give me a donation again. Thank you very, very, very much. Who's that? Let's uh, bring the chat back. Uh, thank you, Timo. Yes, uh, you're from Finland, aren't you? I believe, I think. I could be wrong. Um, I vaguely remember, I think I might watch some videos on your channel, actually. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, thank you. Hey, got you keep up the great work. So yeah, I'm going to have to scroll back a bit here. I can't keep up with the messages. Um, 4x supant at RRG. Yeah, for anyone that missed it, I've got an RRG t-shirt on here. You should watch Riot Retro Gaming's channel. To start with Beebs, uh, and then if anyone we needed, I'd either arc or recall one laser disc add-on too. Mindflare Retro, hello, nice to see you again. Uh, and you're other side of the pond as well, so I've got no idea what time it is where you are. But yeah, very grateful you've managed to get here. Retro Game Revival, Dennis. Hello, just sent a parcel to you today, so hopefully you'll be very surprised. I have some games for vehicle, but I need to get my hands on the system someday. Yeah, I might be able to help out with that, but one of the problems with the Archimedes, and I said it before, I said it when I was interviewed actually on the RRG channel, they're super hard to find. You know, when you do see one on eBay, it's always, well, usually one of the models that suffered from corrosion damage on the battery which can be a huge problem because obviously you end up doing an awful lot of work. Glance Seal will tell you that, he's done a number of uh, you know, 3010 or 3020 I think videos uh, over the last 12 months, they're very difficult to work on. But it's the price as well, second hand, you know, it's like this one I got, this is the, I forget what model it is now, 440 isn't it, 440 slash 4, and it was £150 faulty. Uh, you know, it's a lot of money to shell out for a faulty system. Bear in mind, you don't really don't always know what the fault's going to be. Are you going to need uh, one of the custom chips or something? You know, a VidC or a MEMC chip off it? Uh, if so, it could be quite hard to try and source one of those. Or, although there are some 
people in the UK that uh, like I think what's the what's the guy here? retro uh, can't remember his name and I'll post a link again down below for that later there is a seller of BBC Acorn uh, parts in the UK in fact there's a couple um, and they seem to have spares for some of those chips but they can be quite hard to find um, I looked at there was a, a 4000 um, Archimedes A4000 on eBay last week it'd be funny if one of you guys had bid on it and wouldn't beat it beat me to it I bid up to £160 on it and somebody else won it and this was in the last five seconds I couldn't believe it it went for about 190 odd pounds or something so yeah Archimedes are uh, quite hard to find and when they do turn up they're expensive and need lots of love uh, so let's uh, catch up some messages uh, Paraka uh, sorry I'm not going to be pronouncing some of these names very well uh, hi Gadget UK how are you doing mate okay thank you just a, a bit of pain as I mentioned before in the leg um, 4x uh, now you know why I don't show my face on YouTube yeah, this, you shouldn't, anyone, I would say anybody who doesn't do YouTube, who feels self-conscious like I did about doing YouTube, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be put off, you know, you could start off just doing what I do, just film a table, don't need to be on it, and then as you build your confidence, you go on the camera, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter, you know, unless you've got three eyes, and I don't think anybody out there's got three eyes, we're all different, um, nobody's gonna make fun or pick on you no matter what, you know what, what it is really so don't be put off is the point I'm trying to make um, everyone's got uh, interesting things they can share uh, let's just keep going down here right okay I'm waffling on here so let's have a look now uh, is that too loud the music do you want me to turn it down a bit can you hear me clearly before we have a look at the schematics for the Mega Drive someone could just let me know is it they turning down a little bit the music I need to wait for the catch-up, obviously, because uh, it's a few seconds be between me saying something and then you guys being able to react to it. You're awesome, lads, so you're alright. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. That's why it took me so long to come on video. I no self-confidence, really, I guess. Uh, yeah, man, it's, that mean audio's great. Right, okay, so... Uh, I'll try something now, I don't think it's going to work. If I switch to that, hopefully you can still see the schematics there. Uh, now the frustrating thing is the chat is right in the middle of where I want to show you. But we can scroll over here a little bit I think. Uh, yeah, there we go. So let's get the chat back up so I can see what's going on. Uh, audio's fine, excellent, music's fine, audio's spot on, great. Retro Manden, for 7 CG Micros, yes. That's the person I was thinking of. He's spot on there. Uh, for, for the, in relation to Acorn parts, you know, BBC parts, Archimedes parts, CGE micros. So, uh, yeah, someone contacted me on Twitter. You can still see me again there. Someone contacted me on Twitter and uh, they had an interesting fault on their Mega Drive. They measured the regulators on the, you know, between pin one and three. So, pin three on these 7805s is ground. And uh, the inputs had been pulled down to about I don't know three or four volts or something and the output side between two and pin three you know so pin three is ground pin two is your five volts out that's where you should have a nice regulated five volt out they were getting something like one and a half volts or two volts um, and he's asking you know what do you think could be the cause now there's obviously a number of things that can cause uh, problems like that what my thoughts were you know I came shooting off here to look into the schematics and this is the first thing you should do you might not necessarily always understand schematics if you're new to electronics and things and you've not got a lot of experience reading them but um, yeah with a bit of practice it's it's not hard there's not a lot to it so you can see where the cursor is there you might be able to see the cursor I don't know actually CN7 um, let me know if you can see the cursor I'm presuming you can see the cursor. I don't think you can actually. Uh, now I think about it, it's because it's just sharing an image. But nevertheless, if you see where CN7 is, the little round circle, it's on the left hand third of the screen, if you like, in the middle. That's the DC jack. So, you know, you plug your 9 to 12 volts DC jack in there, and there are two connections. One of them goes through FB1, can you see that? And one of them goes through FB2, the ground returns via FB2. 
So that's where your, your 9 volts and your ground connections are. The 9 volts goes through the power switch. So straight away, that's the first thing you'd, you know, it's not the most likely, but it's the first thing that could be a possibility in terms of the, vo the voltage on the input side of the regulator having dropped down to, you know, 3 or 4 volts from the 9 or 12 it should be. So it's always worth testing that switch, you know, switch the switch on, test it on continuity, make sure that you've got pretty much close to a short. You know, if you saw like, I don't know, 6K there or something, or, you know, even something in the realms of several hundred mega ohms, it's going to be a factor. I mean, that would, it would be a, have to be a lot uh, higher than that to reduce the voltage by that level. But nevertheless, it's worth checking things like that. From there, from that point on the output of the switch, you can see there's two diodes. Uh, now, it's, it's got them marked down as an ISR 36-100A. Um, first thoughts there, you can think, why on earth have we got those two diodes there? All it's doing is passing straight through to the 7805. If you look to the 7805 to the right hand side of it, pin one there, it connects to the same point where both of those diodes are going in parallel. And I think what they're doing there, that is reverse polarity protection. So if you imagine you've got the plus and the minus, you know, the plus and the ground, positive and the ground on the DC jack the wrong way around, because of that diode, that, you know, current can only flow from anode to cathode, from the left-hand side of the diode to the right-hand side of the diode. So, uh, in theory, you wouldn't get uh, a full circuit if the you know polarity is the wrong around. So that's reverse polarity. But then coming back to the whole reason why have you got two? I think it's all about current. I, I can't see. I could be wrong. I can't see another reason why you would have two of those there because you've got to remember under normal operation when you've got power going through that diode. The amount of current going through it is going to be whatever that 7805 is sucking, you know, sucking up. So let's say that 705, 705 needs half an amp from on the 9 volt rail. It's going to be pulling half an amp through that diode. So you know you might need quite a beefy diode. So perhaps one way around that is to have two in parallel. Um, but you do get also a, a, a electron ash says that a lower voltage drop. Um, I think is, is that how it works? Yeah, 0.7 volts. Um, through both of them at the same time, I think. Yeah. So, but anyway, the current is shared, the load is shared, you know, and it's. I guess it's. That's why they did it. But anyway, so rambling aside, you know, first of all, I thought one of those diodes are short. But if you look at the way, you know, that the circuit's laid out here, if that diode had shorted completely, you wouldn't see a reduction in the voltage going to the 7805. It would just that nine volts would just pass straight through the diode, straight into pin one. So you can rule out those two diodes it's very unlikely that those would be the cause. The other thing you would then need to look at, and this is assuming there's a fault on the input side rather than the output side, what else is on the input to the 7805, you know, across the, 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 the connections there, and there's a capacitor, the C2 and C1, related to the, the top 7805. And uh, the bottom 7805, there's two of them, 7805, which is down into the left a little bit, IC17 there, if you look at the, the connection that goes to pin one on that, again, that has a small capacitor there. And uh, there's a larger one as well, yeah, there's a, a larger one, 100 microfarad. In fact, there's a couple of different caps there on that 5 volt rail there. So, yeah, capacitors, it's an obvious one there. Check for shorts, make sure those, you know, those caps are shorted. It's unlikely for ceramic caps to short like that. Electro electrolytics can, I have seen electrolytics short before. More often than not, they'll pop, you know, if something goes wrong with electrolytic, it will blow its top off. Um, but anyway, those are the, the first things I suggested, check those. The 7805 could be the fault, it could well be something, you know, a failure internal to the 7805 between pin 1 and ground pin 3, so it's affected.
In fact, let me see if I can share uh, that. Let me, let me do that. Hang on. Bear with me. Sorry. Technical hitch. Window capture. Yeah, there it is. If I just pull that into shot, uh, let me just go back to the chat, just make sure everybody's okay, can still see me. Right, I'll catch up with some of the chat, so just have a look at that. And, <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't take much to look at that and go, oh, hang on a minute, there's your shot. You know, uh, it's going to be something to do with uh, that chip, <laughs> very likely. So, yeah, I, he did say it was working up until the point he resoldered some connections, and then he had his shot. Do you know what the fault might be? Um, and you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give the guy any grief. It's obviously somebody who's learning, and somebody who's um, certain aspects of repairs he's very good at and stuff. This was an attempt to salvage that chip because somebody else had chopped all the pins on one side or something. So fair enough, he's you know he's had a go at trying to repair that, but ultimately I would suspect that that is why it is uh, shorting on the 705. But anyway. That was it really, it was just something small that I thought we'd have a look at. We can go back to the Archimedes now I think. I'm sure you're sick of hearing no second, uh, not no second rise, what's it called? Second reality, that's what that music is. So we'll go back to that. Yeah, so hopefully you can see the Archimedes again. I will catch up with the chat in a moment. Let's just see who else we've got. Um, other messages and things that I have missed and questions. Uh, solid Core, hi, it's nice to see Co Solid Core on here. Solid Core uh, is uh, active in the uh, retro gaming scene as well from a hardware perspective. He works on all sorts of little mods and uh, things like that. I've got, uh, I can't show it, you know, it's only the room. I've got a uh, like a dual joystick mouse port switcher that Anthony over at RIG sent me actually that Solid Core designed and built. And all that is, is uh, well I say all this, it's really nice, it's a nice little bit of kit. You plug it into say port 1, uh, on a, or is it port 2? The port on the Amiga, that has the mouse, port 1 I think. And you plug a mouse into one connection on it, and a joystick on the other, and it's automatic. It's an automatic mouse joystick switcher. I think in theory it should work on the ST as well. And it's super useful for those systems, because if you've got an Amiga or an ST, you'll be aware of the issue. You know, you get a friend coming around, it's two joystick, uh, you know, two player game, you need two joysticks. You have to unplug the mouse, it's a pain, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. And uh, I think in theory it might work with the C64 as well. I think Anthony was saying it might be something worth testing. Solid Core might mention that to me. Because although you've not got a mouse, well, you don't generally have a mouse on a C64. You can use a mouse on a C64. But you may want two different controllers, you know, I don't know, some sort of, uh, I don't know, a quick shot on one of them and the other one might be a cruiser or a power play stick or something. You could have both connected and just easily swap between them. So anyway, that I will cover in a future video. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, Deep the Cynical, Even Gadge High, uh, Spider McGavin Port, both audio is uh, great, music is louder. I'll oh, show I'm going back here. I've scrolled way, way, way too back. Uh, right, Retro Gaming. Uh, Solid Core, thanks, Gadget, for the introduction. Yeah, no worries. I'm sorry it took so long. Um, I just have too many things on the go. I always have too many projects. I'm get, trying to get work my way through you know, a backlog, though, so I will get to it very soon. Nefers, uh, Nefers, uh, I went on a full bodge wire for my STFM keyboard. The pins are solely to hold the socket these days. Terrible design. Yeah, yeah. ST keyboards always fail on the joystick port usually, actually. Um, you know, the solder connections there, they just break off because of the stupid way that the joysticks are underneath the ST. Electron Ash, yeah, used to play Zark on the ARC key. Gadget, I'll send you a quad kickstart for the A500-1200 if you want. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you know, it's funny. I was thinking about designing one of those myself as my own project, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, if one already exists, that's fantastic. Let me know any costs and things, and yeah, I'll get half one of those off you. That's brilliant. Um, so let's have a look at a game now. I'll tell you what, let's try and control break it. Control break should reboot the system here. Um, you never know, I might have to power cycle this because one of the things I've found, it's a bit like the ST and the Amiga in the sense that if you're in the middle of a game or a demo or something, you control break it, you think it's reset the system, but has it? That's the question, has it? Has everything been reset as you would expect from a proper hard reset or a cold reset? 
Um, because there are one or two things where you know you, you start you launch into the game and it doesn't work and you're like what's going on here why is the system hanging it it's literally is just the old you know you've got to power it off and power it on before you load something else so I don't know what it is that doesn't get reset properly one of the things I noticed actually was on one or two of the games uh, where you got music playing sometimes you can do a control break and it still plays music <laughs> it's like the system's booting up and you know it's coming up with the risk OS how much memory and you can hear the music from the game you were just playing I'm like yeah that hasn't reset everything properly has it um, I mean, there could be a fault on this with a reset. I don't think so. I think it's uh, because there's only one game that does that with the music, um, and there's just one or two games, like I say, that you end up having to hard reboot it. But anyway, we'll have a look at some of the games here. So, for those of you that are familiar with the Amiga and WHD Load, you know WHD Load. If you're not aware, it's um, I'm trying to think of the best way of describing this. It's some software that you install, and it provides a wrapper, if you like for you to be able to load to, to run a game on that system and it will emulate various versions of the ROMs you know so you can, well not emulate but support various kickstart ROMs so for example you're on um, I don't know let's say you're on an Amiga 1200 you want to run a really old game that's uh, from a 500 that needs uh, kickstart 1.2 or something like that it you know everything everything to do with that particular game build for WHD load is there, you know, so it knows which ROM it needs. It can, you know, um, assert if you like that, that particular ROM rather than use the one in the 1200. And it can do what it does all sorts of stuff to make it compatible. You know, make your system think it's, you know, it makes the game think it's 500. It probably wraps it in some sort of emulation layer or something. There's probably all sorts of clever techniques that are used for that. But the bottom line is, WHD Load is a way that you can play all the different Amiga games. You know, no matter what system they were from on different systems well you know to a degree you can't play AGA games on a 500 for example um, but uh, anyway that's it's just a way just let's say to, to play games from uh, you know hard disk typically people install it on their hard disk and uh, play all the games from it so the equivalent on the Archimedes is something called ADFFS I've got no idea what the acronym stands for there but it's something that's been created by I think John John Abbott so there's a forum dedicated to this actually, he's created himself and he's been working his way through the library of Archimedes games and uh, for each one of them he's you know he's, he's, he's done a similar thing that we, they've done with WHD Load where he's, he's taken the floppy image, he's dumped it and then he's done a number of different things he's recreated, um, not really recreated, he's provided an environment around that floppy image that allows you to, to run it with the protection intact so, um, you know, for example, any of the complex disk protection mechanisms, uh, you know, and there was a video actually on uh, the same subject, actually, or a similar subject, done by a modern vintage gamer. There are different ways that floppy disks were protected back in the day. One of the most common methods was to have bad sectors on the disk. I've got no, no idea how on earth they did it, but, uh, you know, you would have a particular sector that was unreadable. So, uh, you know, in the game, within the game code, it would check that particular sector or track you know at some point when you started the game there and uh, if it didn't get some sort of read error it knows you've copied the disk because you can't rec you couldn't easily recreate a read error when you try copying from one disk to another most copy software would have just failed actually and it's dead in its tracks at the point when you try to copy it there were many other techniques like that similar ones that you know ex uh, that use some sort of um yeah, uh, exploit, not really an exploit, but they did something to the disk that couldn't be replicated by a normal floppy drive, you know, unless you did some sort of hack or something to it. But anyway, um, some of the Archimedes games are protected in that way. Um, I hope the stream's still going, actually. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, so he's been dumping the games, working his way through the library. For each of the games he comes across, he's been trying to contact, uh, well, say trying, I think the only one he hasn't been able to do is um, David Braben, actually, he hasn't responded to him, which is not a surprise, because I think, from what I understand, David Braben doesn't like releasing some of his old stuff for nothing. Uh, I could be wrong, that was just the impression I got. So when it comes to things like Zark, that hasn't been publicly um, supported by ADFS, if you like, he's not been able to distribute that that game but the game the, the, the companies that are have got back to and you know on uh, not necessarily companies people that used to work for companies who own the uh, the rights to some of these games they've given the go-ahead to, to, to for these games to be distributed so John has kindly you know packaged up these games into a format that works with his uh, system here ADFFS 
all the protections intact. He usually has a scan of the manual, um, some you know, a file containing some cheats, uh, maybe the artwork, all that sort of stuff. You know, you can get a zip containing the whole lot. And uh, as I say, ADFS, ADFFS will then uh, play the game for you straight from your Archimedes. So you know you can run everything from your hard disk. It's super sweet. So let's just launch that now. I'm sorry that waffle took forever to get to the point there. Uh, I'll try and speed through some of this a little bit more instead of waffling so much. Um, problem is, when I get talking on something, it's like tens of minutes can go by, and before I realise, actually, I've been waffling a bit too long on that. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I did it then. I'm trying to load it again. I uh, opened the ADFFS folder. We double clicked on ADFFS, and you see this icon down here? That's ADFFS. Uh, if we middle click, I think you can see some of the options there. So, this actually allows you to image a floppy. This is super useful. And I did this with one or two of the disks I had actually. You can see you've got two options there. You can image as ADF and you can image as JDF. Now, JDF is kind of like an extension to ADF. It's very, 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 very similar, but it also contains uh, information related to protect, you know, the protection of the disk. I think I could be could be wrong. So you can sort of, uh, well, yeah, I think I might be wrong there. I don't know how he's been dumping them. He may well have been dumping them this way, and that might dump most of the protection mechanisms out there. I've got no idea. But nevertheless, it's a format that he's created that's uh, similar to ADF, and it just has some more um, information in there and stuff. Ultimately, it's like a zip file, I think, the J, J, JFD, uh, did I say JDF? JFD, yeah, the F and the D is the other way around, doesn't it? ADF, not to be confused with ADF on the Amiga. It's a similar thing, you know, it's a container, someone's designed a structure, a file layout, you know, with a header, you know, and that header's gonna contain a number of things at the start of it that says, you know, what the what the disk is, how many sectors per track, where the data starts for each track and where it ends, etc., etc. It's a container, you know, so, but it's similar to the ADF on the Amiga. It's just, it's, it's not the same though. If you try to write an ADF image from an Archimedes on uh, something, some Amiga software, or either on your Amiga or using some PC software that is capable on an old, you know, with an old floppy interface right into an actual physical disk, it won't work. The ADF format is different. It's frustrating, really, because what the uh, developers of that should have done is picked a different acronym. I don't know, DDF or something, or XDF or something. It's a, a bit strange. I don't know who was there first. It may well be that the Archimedes was there first with ADF before the Amiga stuff. Uh, I'll just try and keep, catch up here. Just ADFFS is a godsend. Yep, I totally agree. I think it's amazing. Uh, Solidcore Waffling makes your videos worth watching. Thank you very much. I'm uh, <laughs> humbled. Uh, right retro game and I like waffles with beans. <laughs> uh, I miss my 3020. Yep, yeah, the 3020 is really nice. That's one of the ones Plan C's looked at. Uh, Electron Ash, uh, little known fact, the spaceship in Elite was modelled after the shape of David Braben's head. <laughs> no way, that can't be true. Hello, right, let's just get rid of that again. Get rid of that. So yeah, hopefully I am now back. Let me just <laughs> get back with the comments again. Uh, yeah, someone made me laugh there. Whoever said it was Windows 98 gadget. Stop using a Windows 98 machine. It's Windows 10. It's like I say, I had a rant about this in the first stream I did. Um, we were looking the last stream. Hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, yeah, I detect. I think the uh, Windows 10 machine is detecting me waffling too much, and that's why it's doing it. Uh, so let's just catch up. Uh, yeah, Jeff Jones below on the end. Gadget pushing in and out 10, 20 times. It's, uh, the good thing is it rebooted pretty quick. It only took about a minute to reboot in total, starting everything back up. So yeah, hopefully it won't happen again. Hopefully you can still see the Archimedes there. So yeah, what I was trying to show you there is you can obviously, uh, have I moved the screen there? No, I haven't, there we go. Is that you can obviously image a floppy from that and you can do other things as well. You can, some of the floppy images, they have to be booted. You know, you've got to boot them in order for certain games to work and it will replicate that as well. You can see there's an option there, boot floppy. So let's uh, let's just go in without further ado and load one or two games here. Let's find something. Um, we start with uh, a good one actually. I think you'll like this. It's pretty simple. It's not spectacular in the way of graphics. Bug Hunter, and I might need some of your help. See if I can get a few levels in. It's certainly a challenge. It really gets you thinking. I've done the first two or three rounds, I think. Uh, let's just minimise that. Hang on, what's going on here? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, there it is, Book Hunter. I think, is this one needs a boot in? Uh, no, it's not, because there's two things on there. There's Moondash. 
But you can see that what happened there when I double clicked on that archive file, it opened up uh, a folder with the, you know two files on there. So it's like it's, it's kind of mounted the ADF file. So it's like almost like you've got the actual floppy disk connected to the machine. So yeah, it's very cool. ADFFS created by John Abbott is fantastic, and it's an essential if you uh, want to play games and things on the Archimedes. So let's press a key, skip that. Hopefully the uh, sound level is still okay. It should be. So let's see if we can get the comments on as well. Okay, yeah. Hope you got the mouse at reasonable prices. Yeah, I did eventually get a mouse. That's the I'll show you the mouse actually. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, I got a three button mouse. I de yellowed it. An official, uh, well, I'll say official, it's a Logitech one there. Uh, is that a PC or router issue gadget? Yeah, the problem I'm having with the, the crash, it's actually my PC. PC chipset is perhaps not really supported by Windows 10. Uh, did you try that 68K image, Victor? Okay. Uh, good old John Abbott. Yeah. Anyway, so what you do on this game is you are, as the title suggests, a bug hunter. So you go from house to house, and uh, or room to room, I think. Is it room to room? Yeah, I think you go around various rooms at a certain location, and you have to catch the bugs. So I'm the little red fella down there and use the mouse controller so it's, it's nice and easy it's pretty laid back and you've got to wander around and find an object a, a pineapple i think that is and drop it onto the head of the bug and this is going to be interesting with latency oh. yes I'm just, uh, i'll adjust and then once you've dealt with the bugs that are there you go to the hole to go to the next room what I like about this is the attention to detail, you know, if you look at the little artwork there, I mean look at that little <laughs> cereal box on the table there, it's clearly Kellogg's Corn Flakes isn't it, but it says something else, I can't quite read what it says there, Corn Flake, it does say Corn Flake or Corn Fibre or something, I don't know, and it's got the uh, the Kellogg's uh, green cockerel there. Um, yeah, this one's more challenging, because you straight away you're thinking, hang on a minute, how do I get, how do I get up there? Um, I think you've got to go all the way across here and but the only thing you can do is the middle button it either jumps or picks things up and if you press the movement button you know either left or right at the same time as the fire button you jump across like that uh, in fact that wasn't where I want to go actually I want to try and get onto the table I think so I think I need to do it from further back maybe yeah, there we go. So some skill is required to navigate. Uh, I press the button, I'm just trying to see what I can pick up. Is it the milk? Yeah, it's the milk. So I'm thinking, right, we can drop that there. Uh, this is the, this, this one's the one that's quite a challenge, actually, because I'm thinking you can't carry... Um, Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, you can carry the milk bowl. So once I've dropped it, should be all right. So if we drop it on that one, and then I need to go back around there. It does play with your head. If oh, hang on, so you now I can't get. Oh no, I can't get over there. Yeah, you, you think you're going to be able to walk up the leg, and you, ironically, you can walk up the middle leg, but you can't walk up that leg. So let me think about this. I can drop it to the floor, can't I? Yeah. Hang on, jump over there. Oh. Oh, I can pick it back up again. Oh, that's all right. That was easier than expected, actually. So all I need to do now is time dropping this one. And I completely messed that up. Let's go, <laughs> Let's go down and get it again. Ooh, ah! Oh. So I, I got, actually got him. It actually killed me. He dropped the balloon thing and it killed it. But anyway, you get the idea. So I'll fly through this a bit quicker now. Let's try and get to the next one. Because you'll see that you get quite a bit more challenging. Let's read some of the chat here while he's walking on his way. Lol, day 8000, uh, Del 8000, Gateway Solo. Uh, so I want to go from there, don't I? Oh. Oh. Take two. Oh. oh, there's going to be some skill involved to get this now. Oh. It's limited latency. Third time lucky. 
it'd be good if you can get to the next one because you see the next one is actually quite a lot more difficult the next one i think if it's the one i'm thinking of oh it might be the one after that i think the next one's quite easy the one after that round four super difficult it took me ages to work it out and then after that i am just completely stumped it, the difficulty ramps up incredibly quickly right let's just take the time here and just try and take into account the latency there we go spot on take it back around there um, let's try this one again let's go nearer to here then if I do mess it up I can yeah there we go what I've so far to run with it so yeah here we go room three this one's easy I think this one's only a 10 second job because there's only there's only one bug I think to deal with here but you can see it's super addictive super addictive there's uh, a follow up to this as well um, Bug Hunter in Space I haven't played that yet but I think that's probably going to be just as fun so you can see we get the plant pot and we just need to drop it there pretty easy that one oh oh wrong way <laughs> yeah so it's going to go all the way up the stairs now That's really strange. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Hang on a minute. Uh, I've got to get the chat back up now. I? Yeah, what seems to have happened there is I couldn't start. I couldn't stream again. It wouldn't let me stream. I had to use the backup streaming server on YouTube. So two th issues seem to have happened at once there. One of them being that uh, my PC went down again for whatever reason. Oh. yeah there we go okay we're all back so uh, yeah i'll move on to another game in a minute hopefully it won't crash again fingers crossed and toes this time um so as you can see things ramped up quite a bit on this screen here there's a ball on the left hand side there it looks like we could drop that to kill one of them but you could remember oh hang on yeah you could perhaps pick it up i don't know let's see let's try i can't remember how you do this now let's try and jump over there so go all the way across to get the ball. Oh, hang on. Click the ball. And then we'll drop it onto that one. Yeah, so that's one down. Now this is where the challenge comes in. Because you're like, how do I drop the ball onto that one? And you, you can't walk on the roof. You can only go up this wall here. And bear in mind, you've got to drop it. You can't throw it. It's got to be dropped from buff. And on first inspection, you think that's impossible. What you've got to do is drop it, leg it. This one, the one took me for ages to work out. It really did. I'm glad I did that. I don't like cheating. You know, it's half the fun of doing this, really, is working it out. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. So we want to sneak down this side, down the door, and do the opposite thing. Follow it as it goes to the left-hand side there. Get the ball. Take it over here. And use the little part of the frame there. How cool is that? Uh, it took some serious working out, though. You, other people might have got that really quick, but ooh, for me, that was really hard. So let's go to the next one. Let's have a look at the next one before we put a different game on. I think the next one is uh, the one I perhaps got stuck on. Let's get the chat back up. I'm sorry I disappeared, and I'm sorry if I've missed lots and lots and lots of messages. Um, yep, late night reviews. Hello there, jump even. 50p meter in the 90s. Um, yeah, Electron Ash. Still there. We're on the live chat. Obviously, that's still working. Okay, minimize that. So you can see, we finished that location. It gives us a different address to go to. So we start in a different house. You know, there'll be another three or four uh, uh, levels, you know, rooms within that house. That's the idea within that game. Let's just have a quick look at this, this next one before we load a different game. Show you something a bit more interesting, perhaps. Bug Hunter, what's this on? It's on the Archimedes. It's on Archimedes. So yeah, straight away with this one, 
In fact, this one's not so bad. This is the one I, I did get past this. It's the one after this has got me stumped. You've got a balloon. As soon as you let go of this, it floats upwards. So, you know, the logic has changed here. Instead of dropping things, we're using the balloon to float up to squish it on the roof. So, hopefully I can get the timing right here. Uh, yes, there we go. So, that one was quite easy. Let's have a look at the other room, the next one. <laughs> Is this a game you made? No, I wish I had. <laughs> I'd be, feel quite proud of it if I had. It's, I mean, it's not very great graphics. It's, it's not bad. Yeah, so this is where things get really, really challenging, I think. Because you can see there's a balloon on the right side under that TV, so you can use that to float upwards to squish the one on the roof. Um, how do you deal with that other one, though? In fact, where do you take the balloon? Hang on, let's go over here. Try and raise, uh, drop the balloon from the top of the chair, maybe. And it's kind of one-time thing, unless you can go back up there and collect the balloon. Oh! Let's try and jump over there. I might be able to collect it and pull it back down again. I think. Yeah. We're only going to go all the way down here and back up the chair again. Right, let's try again. Yeah. Now, there are two, there's two, two things to think, well, so, something to think of here. And my thought was, if you timed, if you dropped, the, if you released the balloon from somewhere over on the right-hand side and killed that bug when it's walking on the roof above the other bug, it would fall down and kill the, the bug on the TV. And that might be the answer, because I don't know how else you can do this. So I might be able to jump onto, I think I can jump over there. Let's see, let's see if that, hang on. Oh, we can get the pot, but then... Yeah, now this is the problem. Just watch this. You, you know, you can't you can't get down. You've got to drop it. So you think, oh no, where is I'll drop it and pick it up. Watch. Smashes. And then you can't use it. So yeah, this one needs some thought as to what the correct course of action is. And as I say, you know, it's like you can't pick that up. It's destroyed. So my theory on that one, I could be wrong. My theory on that one is you use the you use the balloon, you take the balloon uh, over here. Let me just show you roughly where. I think you drop, you, you release the balloon here as the bug on the roof hits the end, you know, just before it hits the end, it's the end, and then it turns around and it dies almost over the very end of the insect that's on the TV. And as it falls down, it will land on the other one. That's what I think. But anyway, that's enough for that game. Hopefully, though, you think that that looks pretty good. Let's do uh, escape, is it? Control break. Let's do a control break. I think it just resets if you press escape. How do you turn on the sound on in Lambda? Yeah, somebody asked me about that. That might have been you the other day, actually. Does sound work in Lambda? Um, let's just try that. I'm not sure if I've got Lambda here. Let's have a quick look. I've got most of the uh, the games I would be interested in. You know, there's some really good commercial games uh, you know, that were on the Amiga. You know, on the ST and you know systems like that, so they got ported over here. Uh, I'm just having a quick look to see if I've got Lambda. I don't know whether I have or not. I've got Zark. That was thanks to Plan C. Actually, he helped me find that. One of the things you can have a problem with when you try and find all these Archimedes games out there. I mean, obviously, besides the fact that Emulation Paradise, or whatever it's called, is no longer there now, um, it's trying to find the disc images. There's loads of them. There's Lambda. There's loads of them that are not available, or not easily, immediately, easily findable. Um, and Zark is one of them. You've got to really hunt around to find that. It's, uh, I spent hours looking for it. And if it wasn't for Plan C, I don't think I would have ever found it, actually. Many of the others, uh, well, m many of the best ones, if you like, are, are available on uh, John Abbott's website there. You know, like I say, where he's got permission to distribute them. They are there and you can uh, download them and play them with ADFFS. So yeah, this is the Lambda demo. There's no sound, is there? I don't think there was any sound. I think it's being designed that way. And I presume you re the reason you're playing with Lambda is because you can't find Zark. So yeah, PM me afterwards and I'll tell you uh, where to get it. Me message me on Twitter or something if you're on Twitter. Um, 
Yeah, so let's come out of that. I don't know how we can quit out of that. Escape, yeah. Many games on the Archimedes, you can just press escape and then it usually you know, allows you to quit from there. But some of them you've got to reboot it, you know, with control break. So uh, let's load something that doesn't use uh, ADFFS. And again, this was a game that was super hard to find, actually. And John helped me with this because um, there's a story, actually. I spoke to, I don't know if, you, if you're in the Archimedes community, you might, you might know the guy. He's called Zarkos. Uh, he's got a YouTube video as well. It's um, worth watching his uh, videos there. If you want to see stuff on the Archimedes, he's covered all sorts of stuff, including uh, an audio mod, which I'll cover in part three. Um, yeah, where's it gone? Uh, I'm trying to think what it's called now. Mine's gone blank. Xenon. Yeah, it's going to be down the bottom somewhere, isn't it? Is it? I'm in the right folder? Uh, yeah, there it is. Xenon 2. I'm going blind. It's be yeah, yeah, I'm not sure why it's... Yeah, it's folders are appearing after the actual programs, aren't they? Um, so, let's load Xenon 2. Yeah, so this version of Xenon 2 is kind of an enhanced version of Xenon 2 compared to the Amiga in the sense that it's utilising more of the eight audio channels. You know, the Paul the chip on the Amiga has only got four channels there, so when you have music in game, you know, the sound effects interfere, I think. You know, as you fire, it kind of, you lose a channel from the, the thing. But as you'll see, it's a really, really sweet port of Xenon 2. Now, I'm going to need to work out what the keys are here. One downside with the model I have here, you know, um, and this is true for most of the models of the Archimedes, I might need to turn the music down a bit. Let's just try and do that because it seems quite loud. Yeah, hopefully that's not too quiet and hopefully you can still hear me. Yeah, one of the problems with most models of the Archimedes is the no joystick port. If you get the, uh, you know, the, the three, is it 3010 or 3020? I'm up getting confused actually. Um, yeah, you know which one I mean. It's the one that looks like an Amiga 1200. You know, it's, it's a wide, you know, all in one unit. Uh, if you get that, uh, one player. Yeah, it's going to be a while to look at the keys here, so just bear with me a sec. Loading level one. Yeah, so this version, like I say, is customised. Um, you know, it was an enhanced version. It came out later. The original version of Xenon 2 that came out for the Archimedes didn't have, um, didn't make use of more than four channels of sound. I think, could be wrong. That's that's what I read. And it was distributed on um, a copy of Archimedes User Magazine, I think. There we go, the keys. Um, and I had to hunt to try and find that CD image. I found an ISO on, I think it was on the Internet Archive. Downloaded the ISO, then had to jump through all sorts of hoops with emulators to get a you know strong arm emulator because I think you need one of those for the version of Risk OS that supports CD in order to stick this, you know, mount the ISO to download a zip, you know, of the game and try and get it working. And it wouldn't work. It kept crashing all the time. And John Abbott kindly had a look at it and said it was corrupted and he checked the um, his copy of that same disc and it was corrupted so they corrupted it on the original magazine disc when they gave the game away um, they gave it away quite late in the Archimedes life I think they must have had some sort of deal with uh, the publisher I forget who it was um, it'll come to me as we see some of the other games because the same publisher produced a number of these great games here for the Archimedes but yeah, that, that publisher gave them permission obviously to distribute it because it was near the end of the life of the Archimedes, I think that's how they got away with it. But it was corrupt, yeah. So John sent me a um, fixed uh, executable. I already had all the other files there and it's a, you know, obviously stick the executable back in the archive or whatever it's there to, to get it working. But you can hear the sound is not interfering with the music, which is quite cool. That's one thing I've always uh, disliked about the Amiga version. It annoys me because I think the music's really good. I'm useless at this game, seriously. It's, it's a really hard game. Jamie Morgan played this on this, uh, you know, Morgan Just Games channel um, a while back. So I watched that video and uh, he's really good at it. Just like his goal schmucks. Sneaking behind, look. I don't like this broccoli one, so up there. Here, broccoli. I don't like broccoli. I never like bro broccoli. Mum was here now, she was saying, eat your broccoli. <laughs> it's a bit slow, this shmup, isn't it, until it gets going. I mean, the, all right, some of the enemies move pretty fast. The other thing I would say, you've got to remember here, I'm using an Archimedes that's got a uh, 8 megahertz processor. A lot of these games were perhaps aimed at the 12 megahertz chip, you know, the ARM 250 processor. 
so yeah, you would notice some slowdown, although I think it's pretty playable. If it, if it, if it is slower than it's supposed to be, I'm happy with that. Anyway, we won't play this too long, we'll put something else on in a minute. Yeah, I lost a life. Okay, let's control break that, reboot it. Just check everyone's still here, the video seems to be streaming okay, I think. Uh, Mazar, how are you playing it? Are you playing using Acon, uh, an ARM Acon plugged into a TV or an emul emulator? No, I don't use emulation at all. I do have emulators to help me assist get games onto systems. And I, I talk about that in part three of this, of the, the, the Archimedes uh, video series. You know, I did part one, part two. In part three, I cover some of that stuff. But I use an emulator. That's the easiest way to get files um, to and from uh, systems and things. It's quite easy to set up a compact flash card in an emulator, believe it or not, and then just literally image a compact flash card from the hard disk that you set up in an emulator. And it just takes all of the stress out of it. it it's the far, by far uh, the way to go when you want to set uh, an Archimedes up, I think. Um, so just reading comments here. Did, uh, yeah, so it, sorry, I didn't really fully answer that question, did I? I'm using the Archimedes A440 here and uh, I'm capturing it uh, via, I've got an upscaler that goes to HDMI and then I've got HDMI capture. So yeah, that's how we are capturing it. Lambda is strange in the Fred Harris video, there, is, there was sound. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know, I'll have a tinker with it off, off camera later, you know, and see if I can get sound working, but the version I've got is, seems to be the same as the one you've got that hasn't got sound. Uh, Electron Ash, if I had an update recently, which can all start loading before. Um, da, 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 da. Is there a version of Wings of Death of the Archimedes? There isn't, unfortunately. I wish there was, because that is a really good shmup. Um, it's one of the Thalamus. Is it Thalamus? I think it's one of the Thalamus games, isn't it? Could be wrong. Uh, I remember in school using Archimedes, and someone uh, put Lemmings or Lambda uh, 3D game. Who's a player's a professor? Yeah, uh, Professor Mariarty. We can have a look at that, perhaps. Uh, forgot time. I was only planning to do an hour, but I'll keep going till till nine, I think, um, or half eight at least. You know, because we have not really shown very much here. So let's have a look at something else. Uh, if I just go into the hard disk again. So I think what to have a look at next. Let's go into games, ADFFS. Uh, I'll show you Chaos Engine actually, because that's another Amiga port, and it's a super sweet version actually. Uh, again, I'm impressed with it. I like the music, it runs really well. But again, uh, if I were this one, this is a good example of where the game was definitely developed for the uh, ARM250, you know, the 12 megahertz chip there. And you'll be able to see that, because it, it, it just runs a little bit slow. Compared to maybe what the you know you play on the 500 or 1200 or something, you might notice a difference. I don't know; it might be similar to the um, 500 SMC, but sweet intro as you get on the, all, all the versions really. But the colour's quite good on this actually; it's really nice, uh, vibrant, crisp display. Comes out really well. to get some uh, more milk. I'm drinking milk at the moment because I've got like a really bad stomach I said. My stomach's gone nuts. I'll just catch up with chat while that just uh, cycles through for a sec. Electron Ash, have a tinker with your acorn. I think it's talking to someone else to learn about their acorn. Uh, played R O T R Rotor quite a bit. And the plate against Sandisk had hostages. Yeah, I've got hostages. Uh, again, I've managed to find a version of that. Super hard to find. Was the Archimedes comparable to the Amiga on a technical level? Yes, in some ways more than the Amiga. Um, the graphics capability on the uh, Amiga is superior. You've got obviously you know the blitter stuff and copper stuff in the Amiga. Um, but it was, you know, it was more technically capable from that aspect. Certainly, the AGA machines. The thing that the Archimedes had going for it is the super amazing ARM um, CPU. You know, having a risk CPU there 
Um, it's surprised, you know, I think it surprised a lot of people. If you do a benchmarks and things, you know, if you look at the, the number of MIPS compared to a 68, uh, even a 68030, I think a 68030 is probably on par with it if it's, if it's at a certain speed of it. Um, and obviously, this it's like everything. You can't, it's like comparing apples and oranges to a degree. The software, ultimately, how well written software, you know, dictates how you get the best out of a 6830, uh, 6030 versus, you know, an ARM. Uh, but yeah, the, the ARM processor has a higher number of MIPS. MIPS, let's say, it's one of those funny things that I've always thought was uh, not the ideal way of benchmarking things. Saying a, a CPU's faster because it has a higher number of MIPS. Well, yeah, it's like, but how many, how many, how many, um, in, when, it, when you have a million instructions per second, you know, because that's what MIPS stands for, you know, however many million instructions per second. Um, it's what you do with those instructions per second, isn't it? One instruction might take 16 cycles to do something, and another one only might be one. Um, or you might have something like the Archimedes with an ARM CPU, where it takes uh, lots of cycles to achieve something that can be done in far fewer cycles on a different, you know, CISC type system. Um, but yeah, sorry, that was a long-winded answer. Yeah. So they're very comparable, as you can see. You know, this is an Archimedes game here. Uh, you know, that comes from the Amiga. So let's start this. You can see what it's like for performance. Because I think it perhaps lacks a bit compared to maybe the 1200. I suspect the 1200 version's faster. But I suspect if you played this on uh, an ARM 250 machine, it would be just the same as the 1200. So what's happened to the sound there? The sound's gone crazy. This is that problem I was talking about, where if you don't reboot it, just bear with me, I'm going to have to reboot the game. Hang on. If you don't reboot the system, hard reboot the system between playing games, you know, you just do a control break, this particular game takes offence to it. And in fact, this is the game, when you do a control break, it keeps playing the game music, even when the system's rebooting like this with the desktop up, you can still hear the game music. So, yeah, that's obviously something specific to that game. Uh, just wait as I can see the cursor, I should be able to reload it quite quickly and just start it again. One thing I will say is I do like Risk OS. Um, I see Electronics posted to come up there, Risk OS is great. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, obviously, it's, it's like all these operating systems for these old systems, the old computers. There are deficiencies. You know, there's certain things where you think, oh, that could be easier if they'd done X or Y or Z. Um, there's nice features in all of the different uh, systems of that same, you know, TOS. There's, there's some really good features in TOS. There's some good features in uh, Workbench. And uh, there's some good features in this. So, uh, you know, sorry. Clicking on that, I shouldn't do it. Right, that's that. Where's it gone? Curse engine. Let's try again. I really hope the stream doesn't disappear again. I'll just start it as soon as it comes up. Yeah, is it loud enough? Let me know if you can't hear it or if uh, you can't hear me over the game. Hopefully, we shouldn't get that sound glitch now. Yeah, there we go. You can hear the proper music now. Right. Start a new game. So it might take me a few seconds here to work out the controls once the game uh, starts. Yeah, that's one of them. I'm not sure what it is. It's... Yeah, so you've got up, down, left, right, fire, there we go. Yeah, so you can see what I mean about being a bit slow. It's perhaps not quite as fast as it would be on an ARM 250. But the music is sweet and uh, it plays really well. If anything, it's, it makes it a bit easier actually to be able to play at a slightly slower speed perhaps than it would be maybe on a 1200. I'm guessing on 1200 it would be a bit faster than this. Oh, right, I think I'm back again. I'm losing the will to live. I'm sure you guys have as well. I think about half people have gone. 90% of people have gone. Um, I've done a few things to try and see if I can avoid this happening again. I think EV, EVGA Precision might have been something to do with that, I don't know. I think that was just starting up there at the point where it uh, went off again. So we'll just see, see if anyone uh, joins, see if we've got anybody here. I'm not sure, let's have a look. Quite possibly everybody has gone. Hello, Adam Man, thanks. Thanks for sticking around, or thanks, thanks for trying to come back. Like I say, we'll go on till about nine. Um, I don't expect everybody to hang around. Uh, lots of people perhaps would have gone by now. It's amazing. I did that stream last night, and we had no issues whatsoever. And then tonight, it's just gone nuts. 
So, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, go in a little bit here and then we'll load something else. It's annoying when the computer player tries to steal the credits from you. So like, if I leave the credit there, he's nicked it, look. I'm not sure whether it counts for me collecting it or him. Maybe he helps you collect them, I don't know. It's quite good, this game, though, as you get into it. Ah, I like that smart one there, just took them all out. Single shot. Ah, oh, what's he like? Oh, he's born at a checkpoint, so that's not too bad. But nevertheless, it serves the purpose I was, uh, you know, the point I was trying to make here of the, you know, the Amiga games running really well on here. You know, games that were designed for the Amiga being ported to the system and uh, playing really well. Granted, like I said, this one should be uh, running on an ARM 250, I think. The reason I know this one was targeting an ARM 250 is coming back to what we said about compact flashcards. This game comes on 1.44 meg discs. And any of the older systems, you know, like the one I've got, the 440 slash 4, it's only got a 720k drive, and I think natively the controller and stuff that's on these won't support 1.44 meg uh, disk, any, you know, disk drive anyway. So therefore, it's obvious to assume that this was developed for the later, the models, you know, the models that had a 1.44 uh, meg drive. Skip to the next level. Let's see what this looks like. I'm not going to play this for too long. We'll load something else. Just give you a bit of a flavour for some of the games and things. But yeah, very similar. You know, very comparable to 1200. Music gets a bit repetitive on this game after a little while. I can hear it going around my head now, even when, it's, uh, <laughs> when it was rebooted, I could still hear that blooming music. What I'll do with the stream at the end, you know, obviously, is, is join it all up. I won't just have multiple blooming parts, so this is crazy. The number of times it's rebooted. Uh, hopefully, when we started, uh, we got rid of e that EVGA thing. Uh, precision or whatever it is, that might, uh, might give us some stability, I don't know. Anyway, I think you've seen enough of that game, so let me power cycle it. I think we've lost everybody else, I think there's only Electron Asher and uh, Adam Mann here at the moment. Could be wrong. Has it stopped updating the chat there? I'm not sure. Oh no, it's updating. Uh, yeah, so we've got uh, Kristen Magnum, welcome back. Thank you to none or to not to null. <laughs> I haven't left. Patience is a virtue. Yeah, you need a serious amount of patience with my streams, that's for sure. The NPC guy is a pure thief. Uh, Shiroro, hello. You're back. Uh, yep, uh, again. It's like I say, I'm losing the will to live with these reboots. Uh, is this a new stream that started? <laughs> the old ones to start working? Yeah. Uh, new one. Okay, let's uh, have a look at something else. Oh, what's going on here now? I'm doing crazy things in Windows here now. Where I've... There we go. Oh, I've put Firefox to the side of it somehow. What's going on here? Maximize. Please don't crash. Resize that. Yeah, there we go. I seem to accidentally dock a window uh, to another window, which I didn't even know was possible in Windows 10, actually. Yeah, I learn something stupid about Windows 10 every day. So we'll have a look at some of the other games we've got on here. Let's have a look. Let's see what we've got. What's the issue you're having? If it's a blue screen of death, I can walk you through WinDBG uh, to work out the problem. It's not a blue screen of death. What actually happens is I get a black screen of death. The video goes off. The monitor light starts flashing. Um, I've changed the GPU recently. I had a, if you remember when I did that previous stream, I think I was saying I had a... NVIDIA 7, uh, 760 OC. I changed it. I got a brand spanking new um, 1060. And uh, same problem, exactly the same. The only other thing I can think is to get rid of the 1060 and maybe try. Uh, is it, do ATI still make graphics cards? Are they the competitor? Is it AMD or someone? I don't know. 
um, maybe try getting a different uh, graphics card from a different manufacturer. Because one of the things I have read, I did some research, is uh, there are a number of people with various NVIDIA cards with this exact same problem. And NVIDIA haven't patched it. It's n it just hasn't been fixed. There's people moaning about it, including myself, to this day. Uh, question from Christopher Magnamer. What's your favourite Acorn game? Um, uh, that's a difficult one, actually. I'm just having a look at the list here just to remind myself of what games there are. Uh, well, that one's a good one. Spheres. Um, It might be Chaos Engine, I don't know. There's a port of Alone in the Dark. I don't think you're aware of that. It runs pretty slow on here. I think you would need a uh, an ARM 250. Um, I mean, I can show you that. We can, I'll show you what it runs like. It's useful just to see it. Because I don't think that's covered on part three, so we'll have a look at that now, just see how it runs. Uh, yeah, so if you're not aware, Alone in the Dark, I think it first came out on the PC. Around that time, it hit the 3DO as well. It was one of the uh, games that got ported to the 3DO. Show that. Yeah, um, Dark Ninja Dave, coming back to what you were saying, you know, about trying to diagnose the, the faults. If I go into, let's say, the event log, there's nothing. If I go into the memory dumps, there are none. It doesn't do anything. The system stays up and running with a black screen, with no video, with no, no entries in the event log. It's like nothing has failed. I tried, uh, there's a key combination you can do in Windows that people might not be aware. I forget exactly what it is. It's something like Control. Windows Alt G or B or something, you can actually reset the video hardware by a control, you know, a, a key combination there. That doesn't do anything. It's like once it goes, it goes, and just, all you can do is hold the power down and cycle it. So if we go to a new game, I say I'm not going to play this very long, I'll just literally just show you that it works really. Um, it's, it probably is playable, but it's perhaps a bit too slow. So you get the same intro you get on the PC version here, which is, is quite nice, but obviously it's not, it lacks the MIDI music that you get with the PC version. This was one of my first uh, favourite DOS games actually as well, Christopher. I like, loved this game. I played it right to the end. Uh, I worked out everything. I worked out everything myself, all the puzzles and things. And I got right to the very, very, very end where there's the tree, like a, I don't know, a, an evil tree isn't there in the middle of the underground part and you've got to you've got to do something to that tree to beat the boss I want to spoil it I don't want to tell what it is but I, I cheated I ended up uh, I rang the uh, the number you know you get a number on the box on the instructions and things what you used to do you know tip line call this number you know Ubisoft or whatever it was I rang them <laughs> and I paid the whatever it was a pound a minute I said please 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 tell me how, what I'm stuck I've spent hours and hours and hours on this how, how the hell do you do it and it was super simple it was super simple. Um, it's not that obvious though, I guess. You know, so I don't feel too bad about cheating. But yeah, I've beaten this game. It's a really good game. Stu Roro, definitely not your monitor. No, because the sound goes as well. It's like the system freezes. When I've got headphones on, I can hear the sound. Sometimes it goes, it stops completely. There's no, no sound at all. And other times it repeats, it like loops. Like the system's stuck in some sort of loop. And if I leave it for, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds, it then reboots itself on its own. And again, there are no signs of the cause anywhere. You go through the event logs, there's nothing. Is that frozen or is it loading? I think it's loading, yeah. Um, no signs of anything anywhere. I've got nothing to go on. Well, other than the fact if I boot into XP, everything works. But you know what, the problem in XP, software's not support anymore. I can't run OBS, I don't think, in uh, XP. Alone in the Dark is painfully slow on an A3002. Yeah, I mean, you can see, you know, it, it's struggling a little bit. The loading obviously takes a longer as well because it's a slower clock speed, this particular system. Did you have an Archimedes as a kid? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, my first kind of exposure to the Archimedes really was when I got into the repair trade. You know, so we had some contracts with local schools and we had some A4000s. There were some other models as well, actually. The lower, you know, lower end models, like a 440. Funnily enough, I've talked about that in parts three that you've not seen yet of the Archimedes uh, Repair Restore video. The crazy fan that's installed in this one, you know, held on with string. You know, it's like cotton or something. I had I kind of had recollections of seeing that before, like a deja vu moment, and it came back to me. I remember I used to be able to buy a fan kit for the Archimedes from CPC in Preston, 
and that is what you got. And then the instructions was, you wired, zip feed the string through here, through there, tie the knot, blah, blah. I remember it distinctly. And uh, one of our customers had bought that kit and brought an Archimedes uh, in, something like this, a 440, with the kit, with the string. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm never going to tie this in with string. And I think we, we ended up, we didn't put string. I think I ended up um, finding some nuts and bolts from somewhere in the, out of an old power supply case or something. And we ended up uh, not using the string and just gave them the string back in a bag. But I, I remember doing it. It's funny the things that you forget when you know, a long period of time passes. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was CPC in Preston who used to sell those kits. Super stingy, really. What was wrong with some nuts and bolts? Deeply cynical secondary school I was at. We ran hundreds of A5000s. Yeah, jealous. Wonder where they all went. Wonder where they all went. Some of them obviously got sold on, but I bet lots of stuff just got binned and skipped and stuff. It's quite sad, really. But anyway, you can see, you know, that took a while to load there. And as you can see, yeah, it's not super fast. But I would say it's more than playable. I think when I first got this game, uh, I had a 386 at the time, and it really needed a 486. And then I had a slow 486, and it really needed a slightly faster 486. I think it was like an SX25 or something. Um, I don't know what the keys are here. You can see, you know, you get a bit of slowdown when the camera angle changes and stuff, and because I don't know what the keys are, I can't run. But yeah, nevertheless, you can play it, I think. Is that hit space? Uh, yeah, so you can see you can uh, punch and kick there. The enemies are going to come through the windows in a minute, if I remember. And they come up through that door there, that uh, trap door. They come from two different directions. The idea here is, if you've never played this, is to push that bookcase that I'm walking towards there in front of the window. It's too late now because that window's about to smash, I think. Um, you've got to change your action. You've got to go actions, push, I think. Yeah, and then, yeah, you can see it coming through the window now, so I'm too late. It's going to come in before it's uh, blocked, I think. Unless I'm super lucky. Super lucky. No, look, it's in the room already. Yeah, so I press enter, change actions to fight. So yeah, controls were a little bit fiddly, even on the PC version, you had to go in and out the menu there to select what your action was, and the combat, as you see, is a bit slow. It's stuck on the beam, isn't it, that? I've trapped it between the beam <laughs> and the cabinet. Let's just walk over here a bit, and just have a bash it, trying to hit it, and then I'll upload something else. Stu Ruro, is this alone in the dark? Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. Neil Desperandum, I had the demo of this on my 4860X33, later I got a copy of the full game, uh, those were the days when we had the DX33 and the DX266, uh, I think when I had a DX266 I had was it 4 mega RAM, and that was like a massive amount, I think I eventually went to 8 mega RAM, and that was uh, super exciting at the time, and I tell you what, when I, when I went from 4 meg to 8, eight meg. I got a, a, a friend of mine did me a deal, a really really good deal, and I was paid hundred pounds for each one megabyte. I paid four hundred pounds for four. Was it? I'm sure it was. It might have been before I went to eight meg. It might have been my first four meg. But like when one meg sims were super expensive, you know, I was paying uh, hundred pound each. It's about four hundred quid back then. It was like all of my wage <laughs> or something that month when I was, uh, you know. Studying and uh, working in the trade. It's crazy. I wonder how much money you could get with 400 pounds now <laughs> these days. Probably like 128 gig or something. But yeah, you can see, you know, the combat's less than desirable, especially on the, this machine at this clock speed. But I suspect if you play this in an ARM 250, you know, it's going to be well, it's going to be 50% faster at least, isn't it? It's going to be 50% faster straight away because of 12 megahertz versus the eight. But you've also got, I think, a data cache or something, an instruction cache. So, I think on the ARM 250, I could be wrong. I might be thinking of the ARM 3 actually. Yeah, I think you've just got the faster clock speed on the ARM 2, uh, the ARM 250, and there's an instruction that they uh, added in as well on the ARM 250 that's not there in the ARM 2. But yeah. Hard. I mean, you can see I defeated it, I think. Yeah. Anyway, flicker fest. So let's just uh, power cycle that and we'll find something else. Still, it's impressive to see 
Alone in the Dark. Try running Alone in the Dark on the Amiga, you know. I mean, it could have been ported. You know, they could have ported it to the 68030. I'm sure it would have run okay with some work. Um, but, yeah, the company that developed the game, uh, I forget who it was now, um, it was a French company, but they just happened to be into the Archimedes side of things as well at the time when that was being developed, and I think it was perhaps why it was easy for them to port it. So, I'll just try to catch up some of the comments. Do any point and click games work like Monkey Island or Maniac Mansion? Um, Simon the Sorcerer, I haven't got it. It's the only game I haven't been able to install on here because, you know, I was saying earlier, it can be super hard to try and find games for the Archimedes on the net. It's not like the Amiga where pretty much every game that's ever been produced has been dumped at some point. Lots of the market Archimedes games haven't been. Um, Simon the Sorcerer has, but the two or three dumps that are out there have each got different corruptions in the different discs. Uh, there's quite a few discs, there's something like 10 or 11 discs, there might not be that many, it might be 8 or 7 or something, there's a lot of discs, a lot of floppy discs, and in one set, like disc 4 is corrupted, in another set, disc 3 is corrupted, another one, disc 7 is corrupted or something, and you try and swap the ones between them, you know, so you take one from one set and merge it with another to fix one problem, you end up with one disc that's not working, it's like disc 4 or disc 7, I forget which one it is. You can buy the game, you can buy it new old stock on eBay. Uh, it looks new, new stock to me. I think someone's reproducing it, to be honest. It might be somebody who's got the license to do that. Because some of these games are still sold on eBay. You can, and that's one of the reasons why you can't find some of them. Superior software games are super hard to find. You know, games like Hostages, someone mentioned earlier. It might have been uh, uh, Neffers, I think. Uh, that's quite hard to find, but you can find it. I did find that. Uh, so let's have a look what else we've got there. Yeah, as uh, Dark Ninja said, it's a poor man's Resident Evil. The interesting thing is it came out, I think it came out, I could be wrong, I think it came out before Resident Evil. Resident Evil, I think, took inspiration from Alone in the Dark. It's not something uh, you think of. I, I machine them right, I think I, I'm pretty sure I've read that somewhere. Um, So yeah, you know, there's lots of games you might be familiar here to, some that aren't. So Chuck Rock, you know, that's you know that's there's an Amiga port of that. Fire and Ice, you know, ST and Amiga, some of these games. Flashback, you know, that was a follow up to uh, End of the World, wasn't it? Again, a uh, nice version on the Archimedes. Gods, um, Heimdall, again, that was an Amiga game. Hostages, so there's the one I was saying that's super hard to find as well. Uh, there's a few games that are kind of like uh, homebrew type. Not really, not really, because they were they were sold. But the the, re, the remakes of other games like that humans versus robots, I think that comprises two different games: a defender clone and a um, Robotron clone. Kabang! That's that thing where you drop bombs, you know, across the, or you catch bombs or something, you know, like uh, someone's dropping. I forgot what they call it, a crazy bomber or something like that. Um, Lambda, you've seen. That's just a demo of Zark. Last Ninja, yeah, the port of Last Ninja. I was kind of excited to see that, but it's not that great. Um, I can show you that quickly, and we'll just have a jump in and out of one or two games to see what it looked like before before nine. What on earth is that? That's the, oh, that's a text file. I created that. Uh, yeah, I need to load a DFS first, don't we? The mouse is set to <laughs> move super slow. It's really annoying me. I can adjust that. It's just one of the settings, you know. You can adjust how sensitive it is. Did I double click that or not? Let's try again just for good measure. Yeah, there it is. And if we double click on that, that'll open the floppy. You can see there there's a file type. It says floppy. It takes a while to mount it, I think. Assuming I have actually clicked on it and it is doing something. Did I click on it? Oh, it's up there. I'm going blind. I can't even see. Ninja. Yeah, so on first inspections you can think, wow, it looks good this, you know, the colours look nice and stuff. But what's happened to the uh, classic music? Where's the original music gone? Keyboard control. Yeah, level one wilderness, it's loading there, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, what, what's happened to the grass? Why is the grass luminous green? Uh, I don't like the music. If you've not already gathered that, how to go that way? Uh, the controls are a bit crazy. You can change them. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how you can get Last Ninja wrong. I really don't. You know, 
it's been on other systems and everybody else got it right. How did they get it wrong when the Archimedes is so wrong? I'm guessing it's not fundamentally different. It's just the music and the graphics are obviously subtly different there. Well, very different. The C64 is far, far, far better with its music compared to this. Anyway, let's uh, control break that. Yeah, so I'm not impressed with Last Ninja. Uh, has anyone bought an Oculus? Uh, There's a Japanese game, Capital in the Dark. Uh, Grover UK, I love your channel, thank you very much. Uh, if you won't like this stream, <laughs> it's disconnected about five times now. Uh, I'm very sorry for that for anybody who's been, uh, who's still here, who has been watching. Uh, my very first Amiga game was PP uh, Hammer. Yeah, that's a cool game actually. That's a cool game. Uh, at this point, is a crime. Yeah, I totally agree. So let's have a quick look at something else. A oh, we'll load a shmup. Load another shmup. Actually, this one, one from the Amiga. I don't need ADFS for this one. This is one that I managed to find a disk image of. And all the ones in this arcade folder actually are all ones that don't need ADFS. So Hero Quest again. That's a big game. Lemmings, Mad Professor Mariarty. Someone mentioned that before. Batmania. We can perhaps have a look at that in a sec. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, but it runs a little bit slow on here, but it's more than playable. But again, on an ARM 250, it would be perfect. And I guess this is why the the machine that uses the ARM 250 or ARM 3 machines are the ones that people really tend to try and go for if they can. Speedball 2, you'll be familiar with as well. Sim City, James Pond. Um, Elite. So let's have a look at Swift. The other problem you can have, the other challenge you can have when you're trying to set these, uh, you know, get these games onto uh, an actual Archimedes and play them. Um, and I kind of, I might have cut myself off before, but most of the models have not got a joystick port. You can get various adapters and things, interfaces for the joystick uh, side of things, but they're really super rare, like hen's teeth. You can't find them. I've been looking for ages for them. I can't find one. You can make one. I was thinking of making one. There's a parallel port so schematic out there. Let's press F1. Keyboard. Uh, Function keys to select controls. Yeah, F7. You can redefine them, I'm not sure how you redefine them. F2, there we go. Right, here we go. We'll work our way. Up, down, left, right, fire. And we've got to do in front of the Jeep. Up, down, left, right, fire. But you know, the music there, you can hear, that's certainly comparable to an Amiga. It sounds really good. The one thing with the sound on the Archimedes. It's heavily filtered. The uh, audio circuit there uses like an LM386, I think it is. Is it 386? I might be wrong. There's a couple of different op amps there. There's an op amp, and all, uh, it's, it, it kind of one side of that op amp is doubled up for the filtering. So, you know, the audio goes out, it's amplified, it goes through a few transistors, I think, and it then goes through the other side of the op amp and gets filtered. So it sounds very bassy. You lose a lot of the high frequency. Um, I talk about that in part three when I do a mod to this, um, but I think the way I've gone, is to, well, I think the way I'm going to go is to stick with the filtered audio, but just change the uh, chip, actually, because uh, despite the fact you lose some of the high frequency stuff, you know, it sounds quite bassy. That's what, one of the characteristics of the system. You know, it just doesn't sound the same. I've tested it. It just doesn't sound the same when you remove that. Uh, filter like that and just have high frequency stuff. Uh, Hi James76, uh, sorry if I'm missing other hello messages or questions there. Dark Ninja Dave, I love the F key keyboard graphic. It was an Amiga, <laughs> was it? I never noticed, I wasn't paying that much attention, I was just uh, choosing my keys there. Oh, Swiv and Silkworm sequels, yes they are. Swiv stands for Silkworm Interdiction vehicle or something like that. Um, you know, and silkworm, that's where the silkworm bit comes from, and I knew I was going to die of that. The good thing is, you don't uh, have to redo the whole level again, you just respawn, you know, at that point. But nonetheless, you can see this is more than playable. It's hard, hard as it is on every other system, crazy hard. It's one of those games, it's, when you get two players on it, it's obviously a bit, a bit easier, but I pity the fool <laughs> who has to drive the Jeep because the Jeep is uh, really difficult to control. 
Someone did a, a, chat, a video on this recently, I forget who it was, it might have been the Main Meister or somebody, or Lone Most Post, it was, it was one of those guys, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, they had a go and tried to use the Jeep, and the Jeep is just incredibly difficult to, to use, because you, you know, you, you move up, down, left, right, etc. And as you move that way, you fire the direction you're facing. Um, and you can only go on the land, like here, you've got to go across the bridge if you're in the Jeep. Whereas in a helicopter, you've got full uh, you know, control and movement everywhere, you can go anywhere. So the Jeep has a hard time on this game, for sure. Anyway, I'm not going to play this too long because the levels are really long and uh, it's just more of the same, really. But it looks nice, it looks nice and it sounds nice, so let's uh, control break that one. Catch up with the chat a sec. I bet Cannon Fodder would rock. Yeah, Cannon Fodder's on here. Uh, and again, it's just like the Amiga version. Who remembers Bubble Bobble? Yeah, I do. <laughs> if you watch a lot of my videos, I'm always showing Bubble Bobble. I think half the systems that I test, you know, I'm like, let's try Bubble Bobble on it. It's like, I need to think of something different and make them each one more original. I always get the same blooming games out. Bubble Bobble's made an appearance about seven times, I think, on my channel, on different systems. Let's have a look what else there is in there. Uh, Mad Professor Mariarty, someone mentioned that, let's load that, because this is like a Archimedes only game I think, it might be on another system, I don't think it is. There's the company name I was trying to remember before, Chrysalis, yeah, Chrysalis, I think they did Alone in the Dark uh, port, and various other games, many of the games on the Archimedes came from Chrysalis, if it wasn't for them I don't think any of these uh, you know, games would have reached the system. What do you do here, go to all these doors, oh yeah you do, it's a slightly level isn't it? But yeah, this is an interesting uh, game, uh, platformer. It does look and sound quite nice. I've got no idea what you do. Uh, object, compact disc. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can't land on the heads. Collect the coins. Why is he following me? Can't I? Can I collect that? No. Can't get up there. Yeah, I'm guessing that you have to collect various items uh, to do. I don't know, to access other bits and things like that, I don't know, because you can't bounce up there. Can you can go up that ladder, maybe. Yeah. Anybody who's played this is uh, going to be swearing on the screen because they know exactly what to do. Oh. Anyway. You get the idea, let's try and uh, put out that. Yeah, I'm going to show you escape out of that one, control escape. Uh, Pac Mania, let's see that as well because that's another Amig game. Uh, it's a nice version actually, I really like this. So, I can't put the controls on here. Uh, define keys, shift D. Yeah, okay, so we'll go left, right, up. Oh, sugar. RTFM, yeah, that's one of the joystick modules you can get, the RTFM. Uh, update keys, yes. Oh, hang on, no. Let's do that again. Control, shift D. Yeah, I'm up and down the wrong way around, left, right, up, down, bounce. No, no. There we go. One. Yeah, so if you played the Amiga version of this, you'll be right at home with it. It looks and sounds pretty much identical, I think. I like it up and down the wrong way around again. Yeah, somehow I managed to do that, I don't know. I could have sworn I changed it. Left and right is right. Well, it's not left and right right, left and right is correct. <laughs> you know what I mean. Batman here is one of the most playable Batman games. Yeah, I think it is. It's my favourite version of uh, Batman. There's lots of really good playthroughs out there of some of the people's channels. This Mad Lemon did a good playthrough of this, and it was like a high score challenge, wasn't it? Oh, the up and down thing is playing with my head, because I've inverted them. There we go, let's get that power feel. How many systems computers do you own? Uh, I have actually lost track. It's probably around a hundred, maybe more. Uh, I think the thing is I've got spares and duplicates of some stuff as well. Um, in fact, of most things really. I was counting my Atari Lynxes the other day, I've now got six. <laughs> I've got like four, five Model 2s and one 
Mark 1. I could do get another Model 1 at some point, links. Uh, I'd like to get a, do a McWill, McWill uh, LCD mod to one of them. Trolls, I think it's Vectrum. Uh, would anyone remember Stronghold for DOS by TSR? I don't remember that. Look at those gadget gaming skills. Uh, I'm failing here at the moment. Here we go, go, go. I think because the up and down's inverted, I keep thinking left and right's inverted. Does that make sense? So every time I get to a corner, I'm pressing the opposite thing. Yeah, it's really tripping me out. Tripping me up. Anyway, let's see if we can come out of that. Can we control escape it? Yeah, I think we can. Bye bye, pack. So, yeah, sweet version uh, for Pac Mania. And it's pretty much the same with all of these Amiga ports, you know, things like, uh, what's it called? That caveman thing that I forget the name of, we saw a few minutes ago there in the Listen James Pond, you know, that's identical, SimCity Speedball 2. Right, back a folder, let's have a look at ADFS again. There's another game I wanted to show that looks pretty good. Ah, oh, I know what it's called. Yeah, it's, it's quite an old school game, but it's got some nice particle effects and sound effects, so we'll have a look at that. Spheres of Chaos. So this is quite cool. Uh, yeah, thanks Electron Ash. I'm glad some <laughs> and Nephus. I'm glad there's a couple of people still here. Um, yeah, here we go. That's a nice effect. Just watch it scrolls. <laughs> it scrolls up the screen there. You think it's crashed at first, or it looks like a virus or something. It's a nice effect. I think this is the right game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So, uh, yeah, it's mouse this, isn't it? That's good. I can use the mouse. Yeah, so <laughs> this will look familiar to you. Oh, blown up already. But there's nice, uh, like I say, look at the particles on that. The number of particles is crazy. It's crazy what the mouse will be able to display here. Ooh, where am I going up on the side? Yeah, I love that effect, it looks fantastic. And you get uh, all sorts of similar types of effects as you get a little bit further in here. When I played this before, there was like a little diamond thing, and that was quite cool when you shot that. Might be the second round, let's just get these lost. Oh, one's out of the way, is that game over? Already. Yeah, oh, this game is a good test of CPU power. Yeah, it probably is, let's just start again. So like I say, it looks pretty basic, but it is really good fun. Particle effects and sound really make it. I know it's quite popular, a lot of people do like it, but you have a lot of fun memories of playing this game. At the end of the day it's just asteroids, but... Oh, that was close. Just trying to read the comments here. Any more PC engine repairs coming? Yeah, I missed out unfortunately on a, a Super Graphics. I was going to bid on it and someone beat me to it. That would have been really interesting to look at because I want to get Super Graphics at some point. That thing's firing at me, I think, isn't it? Yeah, and there is a teleport button, I just pressed it there. But it puts you in a random place. So you can accidentally teleport into the middle of stuff. So the teleport doesn't always help you. Oh no. Oh, I collected that diamond. I thought you had to shoot that diamond. Yeah, everything's going crazy now. What on earth? It's really good though. Psychedelic. <laughs> With the sounds and the graphics and stuff. But the other one nonetheless. Round three. Oh, good go. Yeah, super hard to control. Ah. Gravity. Oh, it's chucking me in. It's got like its own gravitational field, that. Very cool. And look at the particles there. It's crazy how many there are. 
Yeah, if you get too near that thing that I was shooting, it sucks you in. It's like a black hole. I'm guessing you can kill it, I just don't want to get too close to it. Oops, sucking me over there now. It's gone, I think. Must have killed it. I remember the Archimedes we used in, in class. That was uh, coming from Ego Chip. Oh my goodness. It's all kicking off now. Look at all this lot. Oh. Oh, no chance. Is that game over? No, it's not. Oh, I have to teleport. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. That's uh, quite cool. Control escape, base. Let's uh, see if I've missed any messages. Uh, anyone ever been to Arcade Club in Bury Greater Manchester, just around the corner from me? Need to take my lad. I haven't. I know uh, Stu Roro uh, has mentioned an Arcade Club a number of times. Uh, what else have we got? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, Zark. I don't know if I've actually sold Zark. I showed you that lander before. It's the same thing, but with uh, sound. Let's have a look at Zul. Because I think the version of Zul is pretty good here. Hopefully the stream won't crash before <laughs> I get a chance to wrap things up. God, that took ages to open that. Okay, I'll just double click. Hopefully that'll work that way. Some of them might say you've got to right, you've got a middle click and choose boot, you know, from the ADFS, ADFFS icon at the bottom in order to play them. But others you can just uh, double click on the executable there once you open the uh, disk image. What a beautiful OS. Yeah, I do like it. It's really nice. The more you use Risk OS, the more you get to like it. Let's see if we can use keyboard on this. Let's find out. Yeah, we've got to press a key, haven't I? I've got to press fire, there we go. I'm not sure what I pressed then, or something. Yeah, so, let's start with fire. Yeah, can fire, jump. Oh, that's jump, yeah. Yeah, so, again, <laughs> very looking very Amiga-ish, isn't it? And sounding very Amiga-ish. I think on the Amiga you had more use of the copper uh, in the background, didn't you? The bands were slightly better. It perhaps plays a bit smoother on a 1200 or something like that, but still, it's pretty good. Clean off. Oh. The thing that always annoyed me about this game when I was a kid, well, I wasn't really a kid, I was like a teenager playing this. This game is a dick. <laughs> that was enough, I'll have to show that comment. Yeah. Um, the thing I didn't like about this game, and the reason I never really played it, if I'm honest, I played, you know, I had it, and I played the first level and I just got put off. And the thing that put me off is the blatant advertising of Chupa Chups everywhere. It's like, I don't want to see things like that when I'm playing games. It was a kind of a similar thing with Robocop. The thing that was putting off Robocop was the penguins everywhere. I mean, it's penguin, you know, penguin packets. Although it was a bit more bearable, it kind of fits. But with this, uh, I don't know, I just never got into it. I didn't ever really like the Zool character. It just felt like, you know, a, a, Mar a, a Mario, yeah, a Mario or a Sonic wannabe. They were trying to, you know, create a uh, nice little IP, you know, nice character there that uh, they could sell and use to sell systems or whatever. And yeah, I never really got the whole Zool thing. I wasn't impressed. Just gonna try and break that. So I'll have a look at a mod tracker next. I think before I go, uh, we started off looking at a mod tracker. But there's a few different ones. In fact, I should show you the, the different ones actually. Let's have a look at a couple of them. Uh, go to the ID disk kind of thing, so the program folder. Resolution looks better than uh, image. Always thought this game scrolled too fast for its own good. Yeah, I agree. Electron Ash, it does scroll a bit too fast. Program. Um, 
So uh, let's load QTN. It's interesting how this works, and I'm not familiar with some, some of the inner workings of Risk OS. But the way this works is you, lo you load you're on that folder. As soon as you've opened that folder here, where you can see these icons, from that point onwards, mod files start working. As you can see here, they have a, a, a it says there ST module, and the icon changes. I don't know how that works. It's like you open a folder, and something gets registered somewhere within the system to associate the files with the application that you've opened the folder for, and it stays like that until you reboot. It's really weird. This is the only what program that does that, and I don't understand how it works. So that's some sort of feature in uh, Risk uh, OS. But yeah, you should recognise these straight from the Amiga version. Yeah, Girls and Ghosts. So yeah, you can play uh, mod files from uh, the Amiga and the ST. Very cool. I like LED Storm. Tim Fallon is it. This was always a favourite of mine. Sounds fantastic. I think that's Pinball Dreams. Yeah, this is one of my favourite of mine as well. Listen to that. You could be forgiven to th for thinking you're playing on an Amiga. Listen to that. I wish there was a version of Pinball Games, uh, Pinball Dreams for this. Such a great game. Lotus 3. Again, it's a shame Lotus 3 is not on here. Lotus 2 is. Uh, yeah, I showed that at the end of part 2, is it, I think? Yeah, but you can uh, listen to Lotus 3 music here. Sweet. Lots of fun members of playing Lotus 3 on the Amiga. I get a 500 pulse at the time when I play Lotus 3. I remember listening to some of these tracks for hours and hours and hours. My mate Grant came around and play Lotus 3s for literally hours. Nephus, does it follow exact Pro Tracker standard? Uh, I'm not sure. These are just the straight mod files from the Amiga, so there's no modifications done. So whatever standard those adhere to, it meets. You know, these have come from my Amiga actually. Project X. Again, could be forgiven for thinking you're playing an Amiga. Aside from the fact you've got more filtering, as I say, it sounds a bit more bassy. But you can do a mod, as I started to say before, to bypass the filters there. You know, just take uh, the unfiltered audio out, and it sounds just like the Amiga version, actually. It's a scary like the Amiga version. I think the other thing with the uh, Archimedes here, from a sound perspective, I don't know about the sample rate, but from what I understand, I think it's, it's, it can be more capable. Depending on how many channels you use, it can be more capable than the, uh, how the Paula sounded. Um, Banjo Gaioli, surprised to see you here. Thank you for viewing the stream. I'm sorry if, uh, if you joined us earlier and suffered one of the five disconnects we've had. Hopefully we won't get another one before I end this. Um, so does the Archimedes share a similar architecture to the Amiga? They're no completely different. It's got a RISC OS ARM, no oh, sorry, not RISC OS. It's got an ARM CPU, RISC CPU, unlike the Amiga. Um, and a number of custom chips. You've got an MMC memory controller. Uh, that's limited to four megabytes, but you can, you can quad that up. You can link three other memory controllers. You've got to 16 megabytes of RAM. And then you've got the VIDC, which is, I guess is kind of like the equivalent of the Denise and the uh, Agnes, some of the Agnes parts to a degree, because I mean Agnes manages the memory in the Amiga, so the MMC chip in this is, is more akin to that side of the Agnes. But yeah, it's all custom stuff, I guess, like the Amiga was, it was its own thing, really. No, not really much in common with the uh, RAM, I guess, you know. Right retro game, and it's clearly you're sticking with a bad PC. Is it a dusty GPU or CPU? No, it's not. It's like I say, if I boot to XP, everything runs fine. It's just Windows 10, and it's unpredictable. This issue I get where I have to power it off, it's unpredictable. It can run for hours and hours and hours and not have a problem with Windows 10. And then the next minute, as you've seen today, 
I'm rebooting it every 10 minutes and then suddenly, for no reason, it will be fine for hours and hours and hours ago. Don't get it. Don't get it at all. What I do know is I hate Microsoft with a vengeance because it is Windows 10 that's the problem, but, you know, I guess I shouldn't be moaning really. I should just change the PC. It is, it's, it's old. Can't expect them to support it forever. Anyway, that's that. As, as well as this, you've got a few different uh, viewers here for this to show. If you get the load QTM display, that gives you uh, your typical uh, tracker <laughs> interface that you might be familiar with there. Although it's, this one's obviously slimmed down because it's just a player here. To see the four channels. <clears throat> Where's my voice? Let's come out of that. Mouse. Yeah, so there's a few different uh, viewers there. There's a little mini one. I mean, you can see a mini one down there already. In fact, those are the same. Let's close those. There's also another one, a little blue bar thing. What's that? that one there, I believe. There's loads of A500s about. Yeah. This is terrible fire, said the uh, RP. Particularly good filtering in the audio. Yeah, I think it does. I think that's reason, one reason I don't want to get rid of the filtering. Like I say, you can do a mod to remove the filtering, but uh, yeah, why would you want to do that? So the other thing is, you know, talking about this being impressive, obviously multitasking, um, it was a cooperative type multitasking system, so operating system. So what that means is your code had to be written to play ball effectively, do you know what I mean? So it's like if you write code that just has a really tight loop and doesn't share resources with the system, share the CPU, you know, I, I don't know, some sort of deliberately coded wait statement or something in there that allows other things in the operating system to get a slice of the CPU, then that app can just hog the CPU. But uh, this is a good example, obviously, a well-coded app here that's, uh, you know, you can see the view bars bouncing up and down. We've got audio playing. And if we go into, uh, i trying to think where it is now. There's a monitor somewhere. It's not there, but I think it's in here. Uh, task window, is it? No, it's not. I'm doing it. I know what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the CPU monitor. I just can't remember for the life of where it is. Yeah, it's not there. I mean, you can see the resources here. You can see, you know, we've got like uh, 2.6. Uh, Mega RAM free there. Yeah, that's not where it is. It must be in. Oh, I know where it is. It's in one of the util welcome disks. You get two disks with Risk OS 3.11. Um, these are the two disks. Here we go. It's on one of those. It's a little app. It's not that one, it's the other one. But yeah, I do like the uh, you know multitasking capabilities here. It, it does run really well. I could have sworn it was here. Maybe it wasn't the other folder. Yeah, it's not that one. Go back into that one again. Where on earth has that gone? It must be in there. I'm blind, I mustn't be seeing it. We've got alarm. 65 host, that, uh, I can show you that actually. Like Mike Chris has crossed the system, I'm not sure. There you go. <laughs> BBC Basic, at the same time as we're listening to uh, Mothbar. Fantastic. The bad news is I don't know how you get out of that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to climb. Control brake. Oh, uh, yeah. The interesting thing is, control brake works as in control brake on the actual BBC. <laughs> so I'm stuck inside BBC Basic. Let's try shift brake. Oh, no, that won't do it. Will it? Yeah, I have to power cycle it. It could have been F12. I can't remember how many function keys there are on the BBC, though, because I think if there's an F12 on a BBC, uh, exit? Yeah, no, I took a, did I try exit? I might have quit. I don't know. But anyway, you can see it replicates BBC Basic there as well with uh, an app that came on one of the uh, welcome disks. 
if they're called that, you know, the discs that came with RISC OS 3.11. Let's just shoot back over there again, uh, program. I'll show you what I was trying to show you. In fact, let's just try and find that now. Before we kick off the music, let me just go back into Welcome. Let's have a look at Apps 2. Magnify patience puzzles, so calc, t test usage. Oh, it's usage. There you go. It's the name. Why did they not call that CPU or something like that? I don't know. So, something to do with CPU. So you can see CPU usage there. If I close that and we go back a few folders there and uh, load our tracker again, um, go there and wait, QTM. Let's load a more file. So, Road Rush. But you can see how little CPU that's using. Look at the CPU there. Just ticking away. Hardly anything at all. Really sweet. Close that. Uh, one thing I'm not sure about is how you stop it. Yeah, control break to get rid of it. Sound there. I buzzer. Let's try to catch up with messages. I'm going to get off in a minute or two, I think, because as I say, I've not had any tea. I'm sorry you've all had to endure so many reboots. Let's have a look uh, back over there again. The thing I was going to show you is the 8 channel tracker, Coconizer. Yeah, Electro Ashes. <laughs> it's just mentioned that, literally. Um, utilities, is it? I think I put it in. No, I didn't. Program. Yeah, can you shift double click on a file to satisfy me? Yes, you can. You can sh shift double click on these things. Anything's got like an explanation mark there, like that, for example. And you can see uh, the internals there. It's like a package, a bit like you get on the Mac. So again, this was kind of ahead of its time. You know, a, an application was uh, a, a folder, if you like, a container that contained all these individual files. And you could have folders and things in there as well, I think. Um, but like you could uh, hold shift and double click on boot. And it should show the contents of that. It might be a binary. Yeah, you can see it's part of the script there. Uh, and run is probably another script. So you can hold shift and double click on that. And again, you know, you get these obey scripts and things like this. You know, the, the script language in there for Risk OS. So it's very cool. Again, that was ahead of its time. I think the first time we saw that sort of thing come back not in, in modern systems was perhaps with the Mac, actually. I mean, it might have existed in Linux or something like that. I don't know, Unix. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's sweet as well, you know. So you never know, there might have been some inspiration for the some of the Mac OS stuff there. Uh, let's load Coconizer. So I haven't got very many uh, mods for this. I think there's only like one or two examples that come with it. Trying to find eight channel um, files is pretty hard. I know there's people out there who've got lots of them, but yeah, you can see the difference between lots of these trackers here. You've got eight channels, which is really good. Let's uh, try and load a song. Uh, if I can remember how the hell you do this now. Uh, load song. Yeah, so let's try that one demo song. Okay. Yeah, the interface is, uh, could be better, I think, on this. But a lot of these trackers are like this. They, they're a bit finicky, aren't they? You know, they take a while to get used to. Um, play song. Yeah, so these are the two samples that come with Coco and Isaac. So, you know, they're not amazing, but, it, the, you know, player is. It's, and I've had a play with this actually and tried to create a few songs, and I was uh, uh, achieving that, I think. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got distracted there reading the comments. Uh, yeah, there's a comment there. This UI looks like, like a Mac. Yeah, it does. I don't know, I can't remember when the Mac came out. The, the, was the Mac just before or just after? It might be just after this. I don't know. It's around that time. Might have been before because the 68000 was in the Mac, wasn't it, originally? Well, for a long while, actually, the, the original Mac. So I don't know how much one has influenced the other. I haven't got a clue. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that's only using four channels. Sorry, I only just spotted that now. Uh, but if we load the other example, uh, I have to stop it first. If we load the other example, that is definitely eight channels. So yeah, there might only be one on there. Uh, this is where the interface is a bit finicky. You've got to click the down thing. There you go. Then click OK, and then click it, play song. This one's definitely eight channel. I know that. There you go. You can see you have know, a light channel. Yeah, Octa on the eight, eight, as Christopher Macken said, that's where the Octa comes from. Um, yeah, for studio needs to be uh, dressed into RAM, or can we simply jump into free to RAM? I've got no idea. I'm losing four channels here, that's the thing I just uh, commented on a minute ago, isn't it? Nefers, it should just find the RAM, but Arc has a weird thing that lets it change the amount of RAM for each process with a slider. Yeah, that's why I never understood that. Yeah, it is a bit strange that, isn't it? Uh, Nefers, this sounds like it's got an Amiga filter on, so you have to turn it off. No, there isn't. That's the thing, you know, coming back to the... I don't know if you missed the earlier comments that I made there about the filter of the sound. The filtering was really heavily done, and it's you know it's part of the hardware. The uh, op amp that's on there, there's four channels on it: two for left, two for right. So you know the audio signal comes out of the vid C, is it? I think goes into you know the first op amp, and then it comes out of that op amp through a transistor, I think, and then into another op amp. Um, and that second op amp is used to filter. That's where you get the heavy uh, bass, if you like, filtering. You know, it's filtering a lot of high frequency stuff out. So, you know, there's, the way you can mod that, well, there's a few ways. I think there's a little pin header on the PCB there. And on that pin header, the unfiltered left and right channels exist. And that was quite short, that track, wasn't it? Um, so, you can literally take the connections from there. Um, and you've got unfiltered, but you're lacking the transistor. There, so it's not it's super low level it's not amplified yeah uh, I was probably going to bring the stream to an end uh, in a minute because like I say I've, I've not had any uh, tea yet well, let's have a look uh, just see if I've missed anything that might be interesting to show you on the uh, regards to the games here I'm sorry it's been a bit of a bitty video but all I've done is jump around and show a little bit of each game it's not like we did with the C64 we put any quality time into anything really um, and part of that is, well, part of that has been the disconnects. You know, we've had that many uh, disconnects uh, here. I'll show you the Star 3000. That's worth seeing because it's quite impressive. It's a 3D, you know, so this is making use of the RISC CPU there, you know. Some nice polygons and stuff. I like that intro. It's quite cool. <laughs> the noise background there. So let's catch up with the comments. Uh, one of my very first electronics projects was building a resistor DAC for PC power port. Yeah, that's uh, quite a common project. And in fact, uh, you could argue that that's well, sort of similar thing that you can do to get joystick working on one of these. There's a project out there where you can use the power port there with some diodes to, you know, use the power port to read in from a you know a, a nine pin D type joystick, you know, Kempston or Atari. So I will have a go at that at some point. The uh, code is there to do that. I don't know how well supported it is within games, but that's one way you can get a joystick working on these. But yeah, as you can see this looks pretty sweet. Again, it's gonna run better on an ARM two fifty or an ARM three. But still I think it's it's pretty good actually. If you look at the you know what it's actually doing there. Chris Morley, great to see more Acorn stuff on your channel. Yeah, I'm sorry this video is broken up, like I say. Um, you know, it's, if you've only just joined, you won't be aware. It's disconnected about six, five or six times, I lost count. But what I will do is clean this up afterwards, you know, join all the pieces together. I won't, I won't upload it in separate parts like I did the Commodore 64 stuff. We'll join it all up and uh, hopefully be a bit more watchable then. Moving forward, I'm going to have to change this PC. It's, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Because there's no way I can rely on it. It's just, you know, let's say yesterday's stream we did an hour and we had no issues at all. The first Commodore 64 stream I did was split into two over an hour. That was bearable. This one has uh, rebooted five times. 
we lost it again. Uh, I thought we lost it again though for a minute. Oh. Is the Arc 8 channel? Yes it is. But it's like I say, I think that that's a theoretical limit. I think that 8 is limited. Well that's what they specified it as 8, but you can... Because it's done in software, I think, the mixing, I think you can have more than 8 channels. Because I vaguely remember Zarkos telling me that you could have, like, I don't know, 12 channels or more. Anybody who's an Archimedes uh, expert out there who's watching this now might be able to ship in. Um, I'll just show those. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting used to this. So where certain things, are, certain comments are posted, it, it's asking me to moderate them, and I, you know, I'm sort of on the ball now, whereas I perhaps wasn't the first few videos. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm getting better at this. Just try and bear with me. These live streams, it's all new to me. It's quite daunting trying to monitor so many things at once and stuff so yeah Dave Curran still more stable than uh, modern PC <laughs> yeah that's the thing isn't it we've rebooted the Windows 10 PC it's five times so far with Windows 10 and the Archimedes hasn't failed once yet do you have Frontier Elite 2 on this no I don't think Elite 2 was ported only the original Elite but it's an enhanced version of Elite from what I understand the Elite on here is the best version. There's some changes they did to it which make it a bit better. It might have a slightly higher polygon count on some of the models, uh, I think. I could be wrong. Um, and I think the uh, universe, you know, that is, is larger, I think, from something I remember. I'm trying to remember where I saw it. I think it was uh, one of um, Kim, Kim, Kim Justice's videos. I think Kim Justice did a really good video, could be wrong, on the uh, history of Elite. I think. Yeah, that was where I picked that up. Yeah, if you're not uh, subscribed to Kim Justice, you should watch Kim's channel. She uh, does some really good videos. Uh, Lynn Millward, hi, thank you. Yeah, much appreciated. <laughs> uh, just trying to see if I've missed anything. How close is the Mr. Archie core to the original? I'm not familiar with that. Electron Ash should know that. Says, yes, I think it's basically all software. Oh, he's talking about this audio now. All software mixed. So just PCM stereo outputs. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, yeah, it's stereo output. It's, it's only two channel, really. But it's not. I think because of the way they designed the vid C and stuff, I think they say a theoretical eight channels is, is what it is. But you can go more than eight channels if you reduce the frequency for each channel, I think. That's probably where the. Uh, uh, compensation is, you know, you look to gain more channels you have to have lower frequency. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to get off guys because I, I could just waffle all night and I'm sure uh, you probably wanted to get that way as well, I need to eat something. Thank you very much for joining the stream, thank you for all the questions and stuff and if I've missed anything, as I said in the previous video, I'll try and uh, comment on them afterwards when the video's been uploaded as a whole as I join all five pieces together. Thank you very much for hanging around and you know, sticking with me. Hope you're all uh, okay and have a good evening, have a good weekend and I'll see you later. Thanks a lot guys and gals. Bye.